Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, are major changes coming to the new rackets that are coming out in January? Stay tuned. All right, guys, so coffee sponsor of today is Reggie. Reggie writes, hi, love your great content. I have a question about string gauge versus spin. Since Rafa is using 15L string, 15L is a string gauge, I think the undulation of the string bed is more than 15 L than a thinner string like Selenko 20 gauge will have less undulation of a string bed. Can you do a video testing different string gauge and the impact it's having on the spin produced by the racket? Thanks, Reggie. Hmm, interesting. So, I actually considered doing a video on this before. Um, I'm just gonna give you a quick short answer and then I may just expand on this a little bit more. So what I'm thinking you're asking me is, um, like Rafa uses actually a really thick gauge string, like 15L, um, I think he actually uses 15. It's a string that's just not marketed to us. Um, and he is able to make the ball spin like crazy, probably the most in the history of any pro tennis player. Uh, and then Reggie's asking about what if you compare it to like a 20 gauge, which is the thinnest gauge made. So 20 gauge is almost like, no, it actually is like, a badminton string thinness, ultra, ultra thin. If you put that in most people's string, well, if you put that in most people's rackets, it'll probably break in, I mean, for me, maybe an hour, for Goo, maybe 15 minutes, um, for Chris, maybe 15 minutes. It, it, it's just ultra, ultra thin. And then they, they call what Rafa uses, the 1515L, as rope, real thick. Now, what produces spin and what uh, would produce more spin is the question. I mean, the theory is the thinner the string, the easier it is to move and snap. When it's too thick, it's actually harder to make it move and snap when you're coming over the ball. So if you can make that 20 gauge move, it's gonna break like that. Whereas the thicker stuff is gonna be harder for it to move. That's just a theory that everybody knows out there. Um, I may just test that out a little bit more, all right? Reggie, thank you for the question. We will probably expand on that a little bit more. If you want to be my coffee sponsor of the day, like Reggie, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. If you want to support the channel, super thanks is the way. Click on that link below that says super thanks and you can donate as much or as little as you like. Thank you all in advance. All right, so I've actually had a bunch of meetings with uh, the companies and have booked in my rackets that are coming. I've been telling everybody third week of January and that's probably when they're going to be due in just before the Australian Open. So you'll see all the pros at either New Zealand, which is the tune-up to the Australian Open, or at 
the actual Australian Open themselves itself, uh, holding the new cosmetics of these rackets. Um, we got first the uh, the radical. Now, will it get a radical change? From what I saw in the pictures, um, the color is obviously going to remain orange. It's going to be just a hair more subtle, and they're going to add aesthetic to the racket. So. Aesthetic has actually improved the feel, in, in my opinion, the performance of every racket. So, uh, will there be a radical change? Yeah, I think so. And I think there'll be a radical change in uh, feel and maybe not necessarily power, but definitely um, a good sense of how the ball comes off the strings a little bit more. Um, it'll make it a little bit more predictable. Uh, is my sense. I haven't hit it yet, but just from the the pictures and the numbers of the specs that I saw, um, it's going to be really, really a good update. Now, I just had a nice talk with my Yonex guy. You know him, my man Blade Bynum from Sacramento, Tokyo. Uh, Sacramento is a town in, in uh, California, just so you know. Uh, Tokyo is where these rackets are made, I think. It says made in Japan, so um, I'm guessing they're close to Tokyo. So the, the V-Core, I mean, when, when Blade and I talked about the V-Core, the first question I had was, what did you do to the V-Core 95? And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, you took off half a millimeter to the top and it basically uh, kind of screwed up that 95. Uh, he's like, you know what? We added a millimeter now. I was like, oh, not only did you replace that millimeter back with your half a millimeter, you're adding half a millimeter more. Hmm, that's gonna be really interesting. I really want to try that now. If you don't know, that V-Core 95 in the all red without the blue, the previous generation, was one of our favorite rackets. Uh, one of the best playing rackets in the 95, you know, in a player stick in general. Um, we're hoping that the new version of this will be even better. Now, in the 98 and the 100, they did mess with the beam a little bit. They've uh, thickened it in certain areas and thinned it out in others. So there will be a pretty uh, significant feel change. Uh, they deem it as it's going to enhance the playability of the racket and give it more spin because this is their spin series, if you guys didn't know. So... Hoping for the best in these, because this was, the 98 was the rack of the year, in my opinion, uh, last year. Okay? So, let's go Yonex. Um, the update to this racket, this is the 100. I want to talk about the 98 a little bit. As you may or may not know, the 98 is in short supply right now. They are actually in no supply right now. It is virtually impossible to get these because they don't exist. There are, every, everybody's going to have to wait for the new version, which is going to come out in January. And from what I'm understanding, there's going to be a shortage of this. Um, Alcarez is number one. And... I think that came in as a bit of a surprise to everybody that he went to number one so quickly. Therefore, they kind of misplanned the popularity of the new 98, uh, the current VS version of this. Remember what I told you? A person can jumpstart a racket, and Alcarez definitely did with the 98 version of this. So if you're in... You know, the boat that wants the 98 of the new Pure Arrow better order it or pre-order it or do whatever you need to do to get that puppy in your hand because uh, 
it's going to be tough to get. So that's just a warning to you guys. Back on the, uh, the strike story or Babylon story here. Everybody's been asking me, is it getting discontinued? Is it getting discontinued? Well, even I thought it was going to get discontinued. Um, apparently, it is not getting discontinued. They just want to give you guys a break on it, like a steep break on it, so that they can put more of these in your hands. They will not get an update next year. I repeat, 23, I repeat, I repeat. 2023 will not get a new version of this. Okay, that's what they've told me. So this will be around. I'm actually at a really good price right now. Okay, let's go back to head here. Gravity update is coming later in the first quarter, like March. Aesthetic will be added, more feel will come a little more ball dwelling in the string bed will be coming also the colors will be more neutral more of like a black and a white not are you yellow or are you teal anymore remember when i made that funny when the first generation came out i was like am i red or am i green am i red or am i green it'll be black and white Okay, so, and they're going to cut this down four versions. The tour will remain um, specialty specialized. Okay. Now, to my surprise, the Dunlop FX500 is getting a facelift in January. I thought it was going to be the CX200's turn, but it's going to be the whole 500 series. All right, so there will be five rackets in the line. And obviously the number one seller will be the FX500, uh, which is the regular uh, 100 square inch, 10.6 ounce version. So they're going to be enhancing the racket a little bit by giving it a little more feel also. So, I know we don't hear much about Dunlop, but they actually do make a very, very good racket. I mean, their whole, I mean, their whole, all of their lines are actually really, really good. They just don't, you know, they don't spend the money on marketing. Um, therefore, they don't get a whole lot of love out there by, by you guys, because they're a little less known. I mean, name a person on Dunlop, guys. Yeah, I know. Kevin's retired, okay? Kevin Anderson is retired. So, yeah, there will be a new great FX500 um, line coming out. So, the final racket that's getting the makeover, Pro Staffs. So, I just saw the new line of Pro Staffs, and... They're going to be interesting here. Going to be very interesting. The color will be what I deem as milk chocolate meets copper, meets a little platinum, and then people saying brown. Um, it looked really good in the sunlight. It looked a little brown in the in the indoors so depending on how the sun hits it will be a different shade of a brownish let's say um, there will be a change to the pro staff in that they will be adding some pro staffs the 97 will remain 97l will remain there will be a 97 UL ultralight and the new edition will be the Pro Staff 100. Yes, they're bringing that 100 
back to the line. And the huge announcement is that the flex will be different in the pro staff. They are going to dial it back to pro staff 85 days. So Pete Sampras days, flex of the pro staffs. So they will be flexing a little differently. I'm taking a pause there for that. Um, in my mind, when 85s were out, it had more of a flex. So I'm thinking that the new pro staff will have more flex. It will bend more. It will dwell into that string bed more because the racket's going to be bending back a little bit more. Um, so I'm kind of looking forward to that because that's kind of what I grew up on and how I'm used to a pro staff feeling. It will not be 85 though. So it'll be interesting to see how it really feels on, you know, these modern day pro staffs. Um, my question to them, uh, meaning Wilson, was what's going to happen to this Fed racket? Their answer was nothing. So I said, is it going to be black? Yes. Is it going to be the same weight? Yes. Is it changing? No. So this will remain black. The RF will remain the same for now. No changes, no brown, no 85 flex. The RF will and be the only one remaining the same. Because I know you guys, including myself, were really worried that they would screw this racket up. And, and Fed couldn't make his comeback. And he would be playing with a brown racket. You know, all these things just kind of rolled through my head. But no, they're not changing it. So don't worry, guys. Uh, you can still get them. All right? Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin where we put our spin on your tennis. Uh, is this on? Harry, Harry, what are we doing here? Oh, hey bud, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, so I'm just setting up my swing vision over here so that during our hitting session, uh, we can you know, see how bad I'm doing today. Okay, great. Yeah. But you won't be doing bad, Harry. No. I'll... You'll be moving your feet watching the ball. This this is why I love you, buddy. <laughs>